pleasure to me to introduce Analia Parkour Scott. She's Associate Professor and Leader of the Laboratory of Computational Biophysics at the Universidad de Federal do ABC in Brazil. She got her PhD in biophysics in 2003 at the Sao Paulo State University. Then she did a postdoc in Peracas Group, working with a new simulation technique that combines normal mode analysis and molecular dynamics. In 2018, she took a sabbatical in Bacar's group at the National Center of Multiscale Modeling of Biological Systems at the University of Pittsburgh. She has a lot of experience in molecular biophysics, and we have a lot to learn from you, Anna. You may start when you're ready. Uh, first of all, I, I would like to thank you very much, the organizers. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to talk in this conference, Women in Bioinformatics, and I will try to talk in 25 minutes a little bit about the, the importance to consider and to, to, to uh, the, the collective motions of proteins uh, based on, on cryomicroscopy or molecular modeling, and to understand the stability and the conformational change of a protein. I will try to talk just one example about human dopamine transport that we, are, we, we have recently a paper accepted. Then, okay, then uh, what, what, why this is important? Why it's important to consider the, the collective motions? Uh, Okay, we have a paradigm that say to us that you have a sequence, the sequence implied to this influence the structures and the structures influence the function. But uh, in the last 10 years or 20 years, we, we learned that the, the dynamics of the protein is very important. The protein is not like something static, a single static picture, but proteins is a, they, they present an ensemble of conformations in a small range of energy, for example, Kt. And then uh, even in the crystal, uh, you have you can find different conformations uh, with a small difference, but important difference to bind in a in a ligand or to have the functions. And then now we, we, I, I like to see this paradigm, this biology paradigm, like a four elements. You have sequence, structure, function, and dynamics. And sequence, it's important for the structure, but it's important for the protein dynamics, and it's important for the function too. And structures is influenced by the dynamics, by the sequence, and by the function. Then uh, nowadays it's very important to, to, to understand that proteins is something like it's a dynamic entity. Uh, Yvette Bahar has a nice book with a good title that is Protein in Actions, that she emphasizes these this, this questions of about the collective motions of protein and the importance of this point. Okay, and if you look for this dynamic aspect, we can we can we are talking about conformational adjustment, allostatic transitions, domain motions, diffusions of ligands and electrons. Okay, uh, when we talk about protein motions, we can think about the time, the biology time, biological time that's necessary for each motion. Okay, the the, the fast. The faster, fastest motion is the hydrogen bound vibrations. It's around uh, one picoseconds. If we, we look for the hydrogen, um, uh, break hydrogen bounds, we are talking about 10 picoseconds. Uh, if you are, when you talk about collective motions, for example, water dipole or something, we are talking about 100 picoseconds. And if you we want to see the side chain fluctuations, we need to simulate it around of the 10 nanoseconds of the uh, biological time, just biological time, not computational time. Computational time is so much more. And if we, you, we look for collective motions or or domain motions, or for example folding, we are we are talking about microseconds or seconds. Okay, then 
to simulate this this kind of biological time uh, microseconds or one second it's so expensive in uh, if we if we think about cost computational it's so expensive you know uh, even if you have a good supercomputer it's so expensive if you think a, a big a big complex not just a small protein but complex of many proteins and nowadays we have many cryomicroscopy maps uh, that we have uh, several complex of pro uh, proteins or molecules and to, uh, then they, they this huge complex they spend a lot of time to, to simulate it then uh, if, if you we want to see collective motions these large motions about the domain or something like we need to to use the, uh, another kind of methods and not just molecular dynamics, free molecular dynamics. But okay, uh, before I talk about the hybrid methods, I just to 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 remember that to see these collective motions or these motions, local motions, we can use some experimental methods, uh, traditional methods to to see this kind of motions, or we can use the different uh, simulations approach, large network models that was created by Bahari Batch, normal modes analysis that we, in a large network models, we use a coarse grain model, but in normal modes analysis, we use the Alatons model. Uh, with a free molecular dynamics, it's possible to see some collective motions, but it's not easy. Sometimes you cannot see some of this movement, but you have another technique like metadynamics, or hybrid methods. Mm, okay, uh, what our our lab has has done uh, have done in the last uh, years, in the last eight or 10, 12 years, we are trying to 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 be specialized in to study this simu, uh, this conformational chains in these collective and local motions, in the correlations with the function uh, of the protein. And especially we try to, to look for some molecules involved with some diseases, neurodegenerative diseases, pathologies or diabetes, HIV, now SARS-CoV and other kinds of, of disease. Uh, and, and for this, we, are try we use hybrid methods. What, what, is, what, what means hybrid method? Hybrid method, uh, uh, they are just methods, uh, simulations methods that combine uh, some techniques to calculate these collective motions with some techniques to calculate the local motions. Okay, for example, I, I will just uh, talk about three methods. Uh, CoinMD, it's a, a method developed by Bahar Group, and this is a good method to see the pathway between the open stage, for example, of the protein to the closed state, and it's based in, in large network models, combined with molecular dynamic simulations and Monte Carlo. The large network models will calculate these collective motions fast, faster, faster than than the the molecular free molecular dynamics, and the molecular dynamics will will be a local search for the the local motions. Um, and we have uh, our group ha ha has been has been used another two methods that's MDNM that is molecular dynamics with normal modes excitated, where we calculate the, the these modes and we say we excitated along the uh, molecular dynamics simulation uh, the atoms along these these motions with some kind of energy, for example five. Kelvin or or 10 kelvins or 2 kelvins depending on the system and we can sample very well the, the space and and identify these collective motions and the metastates states of these proteins this is very important because the metastates states is involved with the functions and it's very important for 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 the protein okay um, just to, to, I will not give some details about the methods, but just explain. If I run a molecular, simple molecular dynamic simulations, 
I have like this surf energy surface, for example, uh, where our protein is here, then we, we have a, a huge, a huge uh, surface, and you have a simulation along the timing, and here you have the coordinates. But when you, you use normal modes, analysis, you, you do approximation of this surface energy for a hyperbolic uh, surface, a uh, parabolic uh, surface, it's more simple. And you don't have more time, but you have the frequency and you have the coordinates of the modes. What's one mode? One mode is just one vector that um, this vector uh, represents uh, the uh, one intrinsic motions of the protein. The proteins, they have intrinsic motions, local motions and collective motions intrinsic. Uh, and these motions are, uh, they are consequence of the physical chemistry interactions of the residuals and the, the solvent. And these intrinsic motions can be calculated by these normal modes very fast. It's not so expensive. We just we don't and after we can use these vectors to to try to displace the structures or to estimate the structures along these vectors to sampling the, the, the space. Then we can sampling the space better than a free just a free molecular dynamic. This is the algorithm for the molecular dynamics with normal modes and states. Then the idea is you, you take the PDV. And to prepare the input, you just run a simple molecular dynamics, uh, short molecular dynamics. After you calculate normal modes, and after you combine these vectors in a linear combination, and then you estimate your system, all atoms of your system, along of this vector, and you run a, a simple molecular dynamics with this energy increase. And then you, you can you can uh, move it from the minimums local, and you can uh, screen uh, uh, out uh, out no, but a, a large part of the surface, and you can find the meta states of the protein. Uh, okay, uh, just, okay. This we just talk. I will talk just a little example that we published recently. It's about the human dopamine transport. It's an important protein. It's involved with, with several diseases. Uh, for example, Parkinson and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and other kinds of, of, of disease. And it's uh, just a, a channel in a, in a membrane. And it's, uh, and it's uh, your function is is allow the dopamine yeah, enter inside of the cell and out and get out of the cell. Then the human dopamine transport control this, this flux and influx of the dopamine. Okay. Um, we, 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 what we try to do, we try to identify in the experimental papers, the people say about uh, if you have different phosphorylations you have a different rate of influx and influx. For example, if you have this serina 12 not phosphorylated, you increase the influx one, more than 100%. If you have this, this serina, just this serina not, not phosphorylated, you decrease your influx so much. Then we try to explain why this happened. The experimental people, they don't know why this happened. Then we try to explain the details, the molecular details of this mechanism. Okay, if we look for the human dopamine transport, we have many uh, phosphorylation sites. Okay, then what? Uh, and this is the four meta states of the dopamine, uh, human dopamine transport. You have an open state when the dopamine enter. You have an intermediate, two intermediate states, and you have a. Uh, Final state that's closed to enter, but is open to 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 uh, in, inside of the cell. Okay, then we we try to understand how this phosphorylation changes this this meta states using hybrid methods. Okay, then uh, we study four system. 
uh, all, uh, all sites phosphorylated is the reference system. Uh, and Serena 12 not phosphorylated, uh, and the other sites phosphorylated. Serena 30, 333 not phosphorylated, and the other sites phosphorylated. And um, uh, and no no sites phosphorylated. Okay. And after uh, define these four systems, we need to define uh, co reaction coordinate. When we define four distance between the segment of transmembrane, this this distance was detected by another group, not by our group, and two distance between the residues. Okay. And after uh, this is our resume of we did, we, uh, there is no structure for the dopamine, human dopamine transport. Then we use mo uh, we did uh, a model we built we built a model using three uh, threading for the N terminal and C terminal and for the transmembrane region we use we use homology. After to validate this model, we run a molecular dynamics not 500 nanoseconds but seven seven fifty nano seven hundred fifty nanoseconds. And after we run uh, this hybrid method, molecular dynamics with state normal modes, and in the total we generated 2,000 structures for each system. And using this, uh, this half, because we tried to apply Markov model with Payema and, and to define the matter states and the free energy for the transition between these, these states, then, okay. This is uh, if we, this is the histogram with the structures. Um, this is the the reaction coordinate. For example, just one distance between transmembrane 1B and transmembrane 10. And here is the population of the matter states. If we look, when we have uh, all sites postulated, we have three states, three matter states, well populated. When you, you have just Serena 12 not populated, you have the open state so much populated and you don't have the other, the, the other states are not so populated. Then this is good because this is corroborated with the experimental data. Uh, for example, just one phosphorylation uh, move the populations of the meta states. Then you have more open meta states, then it's, it's easier for the dopamine enter inside of the cell. But this can be a problem too, because uh, the dopamine transport needs, human dopamine transport needs to control this efflux in flux. If you have a lot of dopamine inside of the cell, you can have uh, oxidative stress and your cell can, can die. Then it, it, and it can be involved with it. Alzheimer for, for Parkinson, with Parkinson, for example. Uh, if you look for Serena 333, not phosphorylated, and now the Serena 12 is phosphorylated, you have more intermediate states. You, you don't have, you just have an insignificant number of open structures, okay? Then what, what we try to show with these histograms is that the this, this uh, if you use the out reaction coordinate, you can see that the phosphorylation change uh, the meta state population. Okay. And uh, this is the another reaction coordinate, but it's the same. If you look for the Serena 12 not phosphorylated, you can see a lot of open states. And here in the Serena, where the influx is decreasing, is decreasing. You, you have less uh, open structures, okay? Okay, after we apply a uh, Markov model, we, we take these 200,000 structures, we generate uh, a, a trajectory and, and use the same reaction coordinate. We discretize this trajectory and we build a Markov model and we validated this model if you have precision of 95% with a confidence of 95%. And here is the, we have the first two PCAs, PCAs, uh, P 
principal components, first and second principal components. And we have the projection of the structures for the, um, in the first system. All sites fossilated, 12 not fossilated, 333 not fossilated, and no sites fossilated. And we can see that when you have the reference system, you, you have the four, you have the minimum populated uh, for the four proteins, for, for the four metastates. And the green is the minimized structures, the initial structures. Then here we can see four metastates. That's it's the common in the biological system. Okay. When you have the situations where the Serena 12 is not fossilated, we have just two metastates, OFU and IFU. OFU is open for extracell, uh, cellular uh, region, and IFU is open for the intracell, cellular region, okay? If you look for the Serena 333 not fossilated, we have uh, just intermediate states. And not open state. Then the, again, these data are corroborating with the, the experimental data. The people we are showing that uh, you you have you have a displacement of the population of the met states, and these met states in different situations are in the minimum uh, region. Okay, and if you look for the low sites isolated. You have three states, two intermediates and the if state. Okay, uh, here's the, after we calculate the free energy based in the Markov model. And here we can see the four states in the minimum of energy. And you, you can see the, the range of energy is just one kT or 1.5 kT. This is so nice. Then, because uh, in this case we have the four met states functional, the, these four met states they are functional met states, and they are present in the normal situation, the reference situation, and in a good uh, uh, free energy rate uh, range. No, then uh, this this is. Same for us that this protein can move from one or another met states uh, when all sites are phosphorylated because uh, all, all met states are energy accessible, okay? Uh, thermodynamics accessible. If you look for this situation with Serena 12 not phosphorylated, we have just off and if states. The green is the initial structure before the hybrid met. Then we can see that uh, the other metal states is not, is not energetically access accessible. We cannot access the other states if you, 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 uh, in the most of the time if you have the Serena 12 not phosphorylated. And this is, uh, this is, is according to the experimental data. And if you look for the, the uh, for the another case with sitting at 333, it's the opposite. We can see the intermediate states. Okay. A after the free energy, we calculate the probability of the met states and the trans probability of transition between the met states. And here we can see that we we don't have one of the states, but we have a small probability to go to to all the states zero uh, zero point. 23. And in this case, we have uh, the four states with similar, it's a little bit more probability of awful, but here the states have have the same probability. And if you look for Serena 333 not phosphorylated, you, you lost two met states, then you have just two intermediate states. Then, okay, what, what we want to conclude with this work and if we apply the hybrid methods with this work is to show how this is important to understand the, the stability of the meta state of protein and the function of the protein, okay? Then we are trying to, to explain in this paper that that just one phosphorylation condition that the people 
try experimental. They see that change the, the flux and the flux of dopamine. We are showing that this is consequence of you change the collective motions. Then this, this change in the collective motions change the distributions and the stability of the matter states and the probabilities between these matter states. And this is, uh, this is leading to a change in the dopamine absorption rate in the human dopamine transport in the cell. And this kind of, of methodology we can apply in any kinds of channels. We are proposing this protocol to study any kind of channels. Now we are studying uh, calcium channels and another, another kind of channels. And, and I think this example, my time is finishing. Or uh, You have three I minutes. I just want to show that the, uh, why this collection emotions can be important with this example. Thank you so much. Uh, just one minute. Uh, I, I have another thing to put. Okay, this is my group. Thank you. Um, and okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, thank you so much for this nice presentation. It's a very interesting work. We have the first question about um, could this interactive method of exploring the protein dynamics also be applied to intrinsically disordered proteins? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, actually, uh, we never did this, but I believe that's possible. Uh, we need to try to do this. Uh, maybe we can have some problems because calculate the normal modes, we need to be in a minimum. Mm -hmm. But if it's a uh, intrinsic protein that you have the structure, then I believe that's possible to plug. Okay, that's a great news. <laughs> um, we have a, another question. Did you explore the dynamics of the cavities or modulators finding site for HDAT protein? Or is, is there any possibility to explore ligands that can stabilize the open or functional conformations? Yes, it's possible to explore. We didn't do this because we just want to see the influence of the phosphorylation condition to collaborate with the experimental people. But it's possible. We are doing it with this calcium channel. It's important for the inflasome process. Then the people ha ha they have a inhibitor, but they don't know how this inhibitor binds and how influence the, the, the influx of the calcium. Then we are applying this methodology to see, for example, you can see uh, when the, the, the channel user, they have the, a move, movement, twist motions, then you can see how this, this inhibitor is influencing this twist motion and stopping the, the, the influx of the, the, the calcium. Right. And the last uh, quick question, what are the docking tools you would recommend? Well, I, I didn't hear, sorry. Uh, what are the docking tools that you would recommend? Ah, okay, yes. This, this, this collective motions, I, I have another part of the talk, but I don't have time. But it's very important for the docking and for the drug design too. Because if you just use one conformation for protein, it's not good to do the docking. With these hybrid methodologies, you can sample the conformational spaces, and and then after you can you can try to to do a a docking, uh, a better docking because sometimes you have find the sites that is hiding. Then with this hybrid method, you can sample the space and open this bind sites. Okay. Then we try to use this to sampling, to select some structures of the receptor and after to do the virtual screen. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you very much.